welcome to hashtag follow attorney Amanda, where you join me on my journey for more likes. I am attorney Amanda Schaefer. Today, we are going to talk about the dark side of being liked. And of course, by liked, I mean, or, or followed on Facebook and, you know, all the social media and everything. Um, there's definitely plenty of positives that go along with advertising and marketing on social media, but there's definitely a whole world out there that the traditional forms of advertising um, didn't, it just didn't become an issue because of the ability to directly communicate with your audience and then with you and do so, so easily and 24 <laughs> seven. So, um, this has been an issue that has been bothering me for a while. Um, and before I get to it, I'll just say the reason I've pretty much not spoken too much about it is because I was always afraid of saying the wrong thing or offending someone, even though I didn't intend it. And that's, that's not an excuse. That's what was going through my head. And you know, one word to one person is acceptable to the next person uh, from the same background and experience could be offensive. And I was, you know, in this PC world we're living in, I was, I've been overly concerned about that for a little while. And I realized that I needed to get over it because not speaking was worse than speaking and, and accidentally um, offending somebody because it's never my intent. And if I do offend somebody and they tell me, you know, I, I will, you know, certainly listen and, and change so that I don't do it again. Um, with that being said, um, you know, I realized that I couldn't really stay silent on this matter anymore. So what I'm talking about is all these negative comments that not just co comments, um, co posts, attacks, all these types of things that a lot of us who are advertising on social media have experienced. Now, this seems to be an issue specific to female attorneys, um, more specifically female attorneys of color. I'm sure white male attorneys experience some stuff online. I've not expanded my sample size. Um, I do work with a white male attorney He's not on social media as much as I am, but he I've, he's never gotten any, not one comment about his looks, his um, competency as an attorney or, or anything like that. Um, but I think I've mentioned before, I'm in a marketing group with about nine or 10 other women uh, attorneys. We share marketing advice and it's a great resources. And we come from all different backgrounds and races, religions, nationality, well, we're all American now, but uh, fr from all over the world. And they've been a fantastic um, support group for me. And we always talk about these things that come up and, and I notice how prevalent it is for them. Now, as a white female attorney, I certainly have gotten my fair share of comments about my looks. Um, I've gotten comments about my age, of competency, marital status. Most of those comments, the negative ones at least, have been offline. Um, I was trying to think, you know, we always, I, a lot of times we delete, I, well, not a lot of times, when I have a comment that's irrelevant and negative, I delete it. So I might have forgotten some things, but I don't remember really getting a negative comment about my looks. Um, and I don't think it's because I'm that beautiful or that perfect. Um, I'm not really sure why I don't get those, but other people do. And what I do know is it does seem that race has something to do with it because the ones who get it the most are not white, um, which is not okay. And that's really what is, has been bothering me lately women are certainly treated different and then women of color are treated even more different. They get everything from comments about their looks, negative comments about their looks, their hair, um, telling them to go back to their country, things that are not specific to them, but in general about uh, illegal immigration, you know, you're helping illegals types of things. Like 
even though we're we have like similar subject matter that we're talking about um you know we may have a different approach in the way we do things and and part of what i'm trying to figure out is do does a certain approach do certain platforms do they seem to um attract more of the let's call them crazies and racists um or is it something you know obviously it's a combination of factors but is there something that really stands out um one thing that stands out to me is tiktok i'm not i have a username on tiktok but i've never used it <laughs> um i do not like tiktok i think it's toxic um i don't even want to spend the time to figure it out i'll talk about tiktok another another day because there's a lot of controversy surrounding some of the attorneys on on tiktok but the ones i'm talking about are not really the controversial ones um but they are having a real hard time on there in terms of people going after them like reporting their content because it's about immigration like a lot of like lately their content's been taken off and you know obviously i can't compare myself because i'm not on there um but I, it is an interesting thing to think about because but but i will also say this it's not just tiktok they're getting this across platforms on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, wherever they're posting, they're getting these comments. Just TikTok is definitely much worse. Um, so, you know, I, when we do get these negative comments, like I said, we delete it, we block the person. And, you know, in the past, as much as like, and, and we'll send that to each other and say, I really want to respond or this is what I'm going to respond. Nine out of 10 times, you're not going to respond because it's just not worth it. Um, you don't want need to get in a fight with a random person and obviously they're not worth your time if they're saying things like that and that's what i have been doing but i realized it's not enough to just block and delete them it we need to talk about it we need to call them out we need to have this discussion in society to determine what's socially acceptable um this you know social media marketing is still fairly new uh traditional print media you know it just wasn't the same you you weren't out there as much it cost too, too much money to put yourself out there every day like that people could not directly reply to you you couldn't directly then reply to them i mean it, it's a whole different world that we're learning how to deal with and we need to make we need to take charge of that world and say you know this is acceptable and this isn't acceptable call people out on it have the conversations and really try to stop as much hate as possible um we've been going through a lot in this country lately and you know there's definitely high tensions uh and we're talking about professional women who are just trying to help people and put out um useful information about the law and give people a forum to contact them and they're being attacked. Um, again, I once in a while am, but not to that extent. And I 100% think that my race has something to do with it. Um, I, I think if I were not white, I'd be getting much more negative comments like they are. And I don't think it's okay for anybody to get negative comments, even, even white males. I don't think it's okay. I mean, there's no reason for it. We're not, you know, if you disagree with someone's opinion, you disagree, but talk, say why you disagree with the, with the policy or not with their looks um, and, and trying to shame people. It's just, it's just, it's just awful. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll definitely talk about this more, but I think, you know, I, it's always important to keep in the back of your head, like whatever I'm putting out there, it's public and people might comment and there are going to be people who are out there who are racist and misogynist and anti-semitic and you know who have nothing better to do than to just trash people and troll people and um and you kind of have to have a thick skin for sure but i think we also need to have more of a dialogue to figure out uh what our society does say is acceptable not not figure out i mean we know a lot of these things are not but really to call people out on social media and try to figure out a way to limit it more. I don't have an answer. I just know it need that it, it's not okay the, what's happening and uh, we all need to for sure work together. So, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll talk about this more because this is unfortunately not an issue that is going away. It's something that's been on my mind. And, you know, I just want to say that the first thing that we all have to do is 
talk about it and, and understand that, you know, you can't please everybody. Um, it's about your intentions. So like I said, when I began this, if I, I was always hesitant to talk about like race issues because I didn't want to offend. Um, but I never intend to offend and I'm always open-minded and, and listening like, you know, words. I was a sociology major and a definition of a word changes over time. Um, it changes with society. It changes by geographic location. So what might be offensive in the U.S. is not offensive in Africa or vice versa. Uh, and so you have to always keep that in mind that even though you don't mean to offend somebody, you may unintentionally do so. And as long as you understand to be open-minded and like, um, here's a great example uh, of what I mean. When, you know, I'm Ju like I said, I'm Jewish. And so I don't like the Nazi symbol and the swastika. When I was in college, I was in mock trial. And one of the members of my team who was, I think he was Bengali, um, he had a swastika necklace. And I went to the University of Michigan. There was a lot of Jewish people there. And he just walked around like completely normal. I was like, like shocked. I was really shocked. And I went to the um, the head of, of the mock trial and I was like, I'm really uncomfortable with this guy wearing a swastika. Why is he wearing a swastika? And he said to me, well, in his country or, um, or his religion, whatever he said, his culture, the swastika predates Hitler and it means peace. And I was like, oh, okay. So, all right, it doesn't, so he's not wearing it because he hates Jews, but he does know about the Holocaust, right? And then you get into the conversation, well, just because the Nazis took their symbol, should they give up their symbol? And, you know, I'm not gonna get into that, but the point of the story is that I don't, I really don't think that guy was trying to offend me or any other Jewish person. Um, I know he had the knowledge of the Holocaust. He still chose to wear it. Plenty of people would disagree with that decision, but you know, I try to look at it from the other point of view that he, in his mind and his background, like this, there's nothing wrong with this. And that's not how we see the symbol. So these aren't easy topics, but we still have to talk about them and I will definitely be talking about them more. So that is all today for hashtag follow attorney Amanda. I will see you guys uh, next time.